For today's episode, we're actually going to be talking about just the basics of microchannel coil technology, what they're made from, how they're manufactured. This is one of our C7 coil models right here. The first thing that I would want you to know about microchannel coil technology that it it actually is not new. Uh, to some guys, they've never seen a product like this. When in actuality, they they really do have familiarity with this. They just may not have realized it. Microchannel coils, the the microchannel process, if you will, actually dates back or has origins in the automotive manufacturing industry. Uh, the automotive manufacturers have been using microchannel coils now uh, as far back as like 20 years. So it is proven uh, by time. We brought this product to market in 2009, starting with condenser coils. It is not experimental technology by any stretch. I, I think that's important that you, that you know and, and understand that. It is an evolving technology. It, it will only continue to get better in time. And uh, we're constantly working to improve that. In terms of the makeup of how these coils are, are manufactured, if you will. And we make these using extruded aluminum tubes, and then we braze them to enhanced fins. You can kind of get a profile view here of the, of the fin pack. In the initial stages of manufacturing, these are actually, they're actually, they end up being flat. And then we form them uh, using a, a a rather high-tech jig process. We form them into kind of the classic A-frame shape that you see here, if you will. One of the largest benefits that I hear guys report to me about what they appreciate about something like a microchannel evaporator coil is, is just the weight. I don't know if you've been noticing that even just here in the first few minutes, but manipulating this thing is, is, is it's a piece of cake. I mean, these things by comparison to a, uh, to a traditional copper fin and tube coil, is rather amazing is we have improved the surface area to volume of the circuit ratio and continue to improve that to where it actually meets or exceeds anything that was ever done in copper fin and tube traditional copper fin and tube type coils because we've improved that surface area to volume ratio most typical split systems that incorporate microchannel coil technology will use less refrigerant which is, uh, which is a nice benefit as well. Because it's aluminum, the wall diameter thickness uh, can increase, which makes these really fairly, fairly hardy, robust type coils. Uh, they, they definitely have a very rough service life. You can probably tell on this example here, but uh, this, this particular coil that we're using here for, for the Lunch and Learn, uh, this, thing's been, this thing's been through the sausage grinder and then some, but they do really have a... A really nice rough service life to them rough service life continuing on in terms of the basics on these coils uh, you'll have a single liquid line distributor tube and a uh, union point for uh, a metering device attachment here in this in this particular case here we'll have a, uh, a piston a fixed bore metering device type piston that single liquid line distributor will then make its way down to the liquid header tube situated right down here. So if you were viewing the coil head on, kind of like so, then this single liquid line uh, distributor would feed down to what would be your lower right hand side as you're viewing the coil. And then on the opposite side, we have uh, the vapor header and we have the vapor header tube over here on what would be, as you're viewing this, on, on your lower left side. So this would be the vapor header tube here, or header tube here. When the system is active, if you will, and the condenser is operating, how these coils feed, you, again, you've got your liquid inlet down through the liquid line distributor into the liquid header, and then these coils will begin to, Will, they'll, they'll begin to kind of almost think of them filling like a glass of water, if you will, where you have this cascade effect from the one side down to uh, the opposite side there. And that also helps to improve their performance because you, you don't have multiple circuits that you're then trying to 
uh, saturate on two individual slabs like you would a traditional copper fin and tube coil. That's another point of uh, kind of the superiority of this technology over the, the, the aging copper fin and tube designs. Changing the metering device on these is really quite simple. Uh, these can, in, in, in some, I shouldn't say all, but in many matchups in terms of uh, an evaporator coil to a condenser, uh, you may see that they could uh, operate off of a fixed bore metering device. Uh, but if you needed to add a TXV to these, that's really quite simple. We're actually going to get into that into one of the other episodes a little bit later on. But adding a metering device to these is really rather quite simple. One thing that I do want to point out, as you're viewing this coil right now in this, in this orientation, if you will, you can see that you have the suction uh, header here and you have the liquid header here. And as tempting as it may be when you are doing installations, as tempting as it may be to use those as handles, you do not want to do that. And the reason being is that if you apply enough torque and pressure on these, what can begin to happen is you'll begin to create some micro fractures where these become part of the, the larger main liquid and vapor header tubes on the lower right and lower left sides of the coil. These are so lightweight that it's really, it, it's not necessary to do that. Getting these up, you know, getting these into tight spaces uh, is really, is really, I mean, it's it's really simple. I, I I'm I'm certainly no threat to make the cover of a Wheaties box anytime soon. And you can see that I can I can manipulate this coil really rather easily. The the weight on these, the weight savings, is really rather remarkable. That's the basics of how these are made. Uh, they again, they're extruded aluminum tubes, and we braze them to enhanced fins. They really do have a a nice rough service life to them. There really isn't a lot of magic or anything like that in terms of how these are actually manufactured. It's, it's proven technology, and, and all we're doing is we're just adapting this technology to the benefit of the heating and air conditioning industry. I hope that you found today's episode interesting. Thanks again.